make the mosaic garden snail, you'll need a garden snail. This is a little ceramic snail we got in the seasonal section at the drugstore. You'll need white powdered grout, this mosaic grout. You'll need grout sealer. You'll need a disposable cup. This is to mix the grout in. For glue, we're using 100% clear silicone from the hardware store. We've got a sponge paint brush for the sealer, a putty knife for the grout, a tablespoon to measure our grout and a sponge. And then of course we have tiles. These are 3 8 inch mini tiles. Uh, some are kind of glittered and some are just glass. And then we also have these cute little ceramic dots. These are little round tiles. You'll also need a cup, a bucket to rinse your sponges in, protective gloves, and paper towels. So we've got our snail here and we thought it would be fun to leave this part and just mosaic the shell part and kind of follow this spiral outline. And we've got the, the snail resting on a piece of canvas folded up, it's just a piece of drop cloth so that we've got a, him nice and sturdy while we're working on him and he's level. And now we're ready to get started on spiraling or mosaicing the spiral. So all we do is glue the tiles down where we want them and that's what the 100% clear silicone is for. It's a glue adhesive and you don't need very much glue on the tiles. I'm just doing a little dab. It's just going to hold them in place and then we're going to grout and the grout's really going to do most of the work. And I'm just putting a little dab on here and then setting the tiles pretty close together. We want grout in between them, but we also want them close together so that they read as a line going around. The tiles that we picked, some of them have glitter on the back, and some of them are just uh, plain on the, on the back and glass on top. So you want to be sure you're putting the glue on the back side yes. of whatever tiles you choose. So you can see Kitty is putting the glue on the glittered matte side and not the glossy top. And we just found this snail at the drugstore, and they had turtles, too. Turtle would be really cute. You could just do the shell of a turtle. Well, that'd be darling. And once you kind of get it in your mind that you could just mosaic things that already exist, you can start shopping anywhere for something to mosaic. Oh, yeah. You could look at Dollar Tree or um, any of those discount home stores. Goods. like Yeah, Home Goods or Marshalls or any of those places that have little home accents. Our cousin Heather does shell mosaics and she does them on beautiful crosses and she bu buys the crosses. I think they're, she finds them at home goods and places like that. Yeah. And then it gives you a nice base to work on so you're not trying to make up what the mosaic base substrate is. Yeah, and it gives you shapes. Like you have an automatic snail shell, for example. Yeah. Here. We're just adding a little bit of glitz and glam by doing the mosaic on the shell. Exactly. That is looking really cool. It looks great. We chose these yellow and orange and red tiles for as our color story for this mosaic because we want the snail to live in the garden. And the garden is mostly green with greenery, leaves, and dirt and that sort of thing. So he's really going to show up. We talked about whether we needed to spray paint this give it a primer. And we decided if we did that, we would have to mask off the body, which we didn't necessarily want to do. And we weren't, we don't think it's necessary. It's all going to get covered up anyway. Right. And the silicone is super grabby. And um, once we grout it, the grout will be, you know, nice and firmly on the shell. Yes. So it should be fine. That's looking great. It is. And this glue is pretty viscous. So these tiles are staying in place, but you might run into a problem like on this part where the tiles want to slide off. You have, might have to hold them down for a second, but so far we're doing okay here. And then I think I'm going to make that the center right oh, there. Oh yeah, that seems great. Because it doesn't feel like two more would fit in there. I think that's perfect. Maybe rotated like that. That looks very cool. Looks fantastic. And now what we can do is sort of fill in the gaps with some of these other colors. Do you want to do some gluing? I'm sure. What what which ones do you think we should should we start by filling in this part? Yeah, let's use the little red dots, oh, I that think. Seems if fun. they'll fit. Do you want to see if they'll fit? Right, let's test that out first. Because that would be a pretty expansive it seems piece like of it ground. Would It'll fit, fit right yeah. there, yeah. 
see how close I can get him where the first one is that I can do without oh, losing good. without losing our is that still in the right place? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. I think you can probably get three in that spot. Let's see how we do here. I love these little the little dots are great. We have a collection of tiles that we've just kept from other projects. Um, it's just a good idea, you know, they don't take up much space in our craft bins. And then we end up with lots and lots of tiles to choose from, especially when you don't know what kind of shape you're doing. If you're doing a tabletop, you kind of know what the shape is. But, Squares work fine. <laughs> yeah, but if you're doing, you know, interesting, unusual, whoops, shapes like this, you need That's fine. a bunch of different tiles and different yeah. shapes. So we're going to keep filling in this part with the dots. And once we have all the dots in, we'll start in with maybe some of the orange tiles. We finished putting the tiles in on our spiral, and now we're going to continue this look by doing stripes, we think, all the way out in the same sort of spirally way. What should yeah. we do next? What color do you think? I think in this red Ooh, that's nice. square would be nice. And we'll want to run it pretty close. This is going to be our grout line, how much grout shows between. Um, but these stripes are going to expand across the bottom. So I'm going to give this a little extra space there. Oh, that's a good idea. Does that kind of make yeah. sense? Yeah. So, and these tiles came on a backing that was kind of mesh or web. So the bottoms of them look kind of funny. But thankfully, the little, the little edges, if they have any little edge left of mesh on them, that won't show because it's going to be covered up by grout. Yeah, the grout will cover that up. And that's true, too, if you have any glue squishes out from under your tile, that'll get covered up by the grout, so don't worry about that. It's one of the things we love about mosaic is it's actually very freeform and also yes, very forgiving. Very forgiving. So it means that you don't have to be super precise, especially on a project like this that's whimsical. Yeah, this was just for fun. I'm going to rotate him so I can see what I'm doing here. Good. That looks good. I'm looking looks at great. the spacing between these tiles is pretty good. Now we're getting to a point where gravity is going to fight. That's right. I may have to hold them. Now, we part of why we chose mini tiles and these little tiny dots for this project is we've got a curved surface. Yes. And if we used tiles that were bigger, they wouldn't have enough grab. There wouldn't be enough surface area touching. Yeah, they would... Like just they'd rest rest on mm. the on this curve. They would sit on it this way. These have a lot more contact. That's looking good. So I'm just going to finish this stripe up, and we'll keep adding tiles just like this all the way around until we've got the whole shell covered. So we finished gluing down our tiles and we let the glue set up so the tiles are on there good and now we're ready to do the grouting. We're going to mix our grout in a disposable container. We're just using a, an old sour cream container that we cleaned out. And our grout package says that we've got a three to one ratio of grout to water. So I'm going to start by putting one tablespoon of water in our container. We like to put the water in first because the grout is very powdery and it will go into the air um, if we just dump it in the container without the water. So I dried off my spoon and now I'm going to do three tablespoons of our powdered grout. We're only making enough grout to do half of the snail because we need it to dry and set up before we flip the snail over to do the other half. So we're going to do it in sections. So there we go. Now I'm just going to stir this using a putty knife. And what we'll do is just mix it in as much as we can and then check the consistency of it. And this looks pretty dry and crumbly. You don't want it dry and crumbly and you don't want it runny. You want it in between kind of the texture of natural peanut butter. So this could use a little bit more water. So I'm going to add just about I would say a teaspoon or half a yeah, tablespoon. Yeah, about half a tablespoon yeah. more. See how that is. Once you have this mixed up to the texture that you like it, you have about 15 minutes to work with it before it hardens up. 
So I actually think we might be a little bit too runny. Yeah, we, we could, could use, a little runny. Yeah, we could use a tiny bit more. There's a little dry clump over oh, here, good. actually. Oh, get that out of there. That might do it. Just a tiny bit um, runny. Could use a tiny little bit more of the powdered grout. So I'm just going to dump in a tiny bit more. It's it's not super precise. You really have to go with what the texture looks like. It changes every time too, because maybe it's the humidity or dryness of the air or something. But we write down the recipe that works, but it doesn't always work. That's perfect. That seems really good. That's, That's a perfect texture there. Great. So we've got our mosaic here, and to Put the grout on the mosaic. What we do is we actually just put the grout on the mosaic. And usually we would use a putty knife to spread it around, but this is so curved. I'm just gonna use my fingers. And the goal is to get the grout in between every tile. So I'm going backwards and forwards and left and right on each one. The grout is what's going to hold every single tile in place. Yes. If the grout is missing on any side of any of these tiles, it could lose um, its grip. And yeah, and the then tile. you might lose that tile. So it's important to really go around every single tile. Yes. And it helps to use your fingers for that reason. Obviously, we've got gloved hands here because this is a somewhat of a cement mixture and it's got... Yeah, it has some um, stuff in it that's not good for your skin. But using your fingers, you can really feel um, the grout and feel that it's in between all yeah. of the tiles nicely. And like I can see I'm going back and forth here, but then when I go sideways, I could see that there, it pulled some of the grout out. So I need to go back and put that grout back in there. Really want the grout in between all the tiles. And then what we're going to do on the edge here is we're going to make a little smooth edge under the tiles. And fingers are good for this too. Just kind of making a little like creating your own the edge of edge. the shell here and it will kind of build itself um the grout will grab in between yeah. the tiles and you can create a nice little edge that way yeah that's looking good it's funny it looks like you've destroyed your mosaic i, yes. I always panic a little bit at this part like oh, oh no it looks so mosaic. beautiful it's okay but we are going to buff all of this off so. yes it will look beautiful. So I'm just going to rotate this a little bit. The sanded grout that we're using, or the grout that we're using, um, is white. And if you wanted to, you could tint it um, with just a little bit of acrylic paint if you don't like the white. Yes. We kind of like the white with the, these vibrant um, reds and oranges and yellows. It but sets it, them off. It's very easy to tint it. So I'm just going to keep on putting the grout around and I could use a little bit more. You grab a little more here with our yeah. putty knife. Thank you. If you're doing a really big mosaic, you can do like if you're if you bought a really big snail or an alligator or something that you yes. want to put in the garden. Big lizard. A big lizard, for example. You could mix up several batches of grout and just grout little by little. Yeah, we recommend that you work in small areas. It can be overwhelming and you'll feel rushed. And that's not fun. So and the, just do a little at a time. And the grout will end up matching up to itself. It sort of magically. Yeah, there won't be a know, seam. There won't be a seam. The only trick is if you're tinting your grout, it can be hard to match your color. That's true. Um, so be, be more precise about your measurements. Yes. So the next thing we want to do is remove the excess and I'm doing this very gently because I don't want to take the grout out from between the tiles. I just want to uncover the tiles a little bit. This is going to help make the buffing process a lot easier. Yes. You don't want to leave a ton of grout on top especially because it's it's uneven right now. Yes. Um, so wiping it off is going to help with the buffing process and it will also make the whole mosaic a little smoother. So that's about all I can do with my finger but I have a damp sponge here and I just used it in the bucket of water and squeezed it out and then I can go around on all the tiles and remove the excess and that's all you need to do. It doesn't need to be more clean than that. That's exactly how clean it needs to be because once we finish this step, 
we're going to wait 15 minutes and then we're going to buff this haze off these tiles. So I'm just going to finish sponging. We'll wait 15 minutes and then we can buff. We waited 15 minutes and you can see that a haze has formed over our tiles and now we're ready to buff. So what we want to do is we took a clean part of our sponge and got it damp with clean water, no grout on the water. And I'm just going to wipe the tops of these tiles. I don't want to remove any of the grout that's between the tiles. I just want to clean off that haze. You can also use a paper towel for this. I like to do the first pass with the sponge and then check back again in about 15 minutes and if there's still a haze then use a paper towel for that pass. And just remember when you're doing this that the grout is not set up yet so it would be easy to damage it like in this area. I'm going to be very careful. So we're just going to keep cleaning the tops of the tiles off and then we'll come back in 15 minutes and see if another haze has formed. And to seal our mosaic when we're done, we're just going to use our grout sealer and paint it on with a foam paint brush and then let that dry. Mm -hmm.